Hi there. So this let us address now a tutorial regarding the BOF solver for free surface. So this is a classical case. Okay, we we have you have your tutorial here. So it's heat resistant simulation. Now, so <clears throat> this is what we have now. We have the hole here. You have the water, water, air, and simply just computing the free surface. Okay, so let's do this simulation. Okay, so the first thing this is, as you see, this is fully on a steady case. It is time consuming, so I'm not going to run the whole the whole thing. So I'm just going to show you the basic things to the setup, but also in the folder we have the final solution that you can take a look. But okay, so this is also a validation case, so we can compare with some experimental measurements. And you see that we have a very good agreement. So this is the the, the <clears throat> surface water level, okay, in the whole surface. And just to set up this case, it's pretty much everything is is the same. But we're going to to look at new dictionary or a, a little bit different transport properties. And in this one, we need to define the fluid property, the property of the phase. So in this case, we have two faces and you define here. So you have this keyword, faces, and then you give the name of the faces here, water and air. So OpenFont does not have uh, a database. So this is user given, okay? So you call it water, air, you can call it, you know, banana and pineapples, whatever. So you call it water and air, and then here you have your other dictionary where you give your properties. Now the model that you want to use, uh, kinematic viscosity and density. Okay, and then also you need to define the, surfa the surface tension. Okay, sigma is surface tension. Remember that this is another model. So usually when you have larger scale systems, it's not necessarily you need to put it to, you, you can put it to zero. A small scale system or in simulation where you know that surface tension is a significant force, you need to, to include it. In this case, it's not necessarily to include it, but nevertheless, I, I, le I left it there. So. You can see how to set up, but have in mind that this is another model. So it might slow down the computation also, but also it might add some problems into your computation. So this file, we set up physical properties, very important, but pay attention to the first one that you put here. This is the primary phase. So it is the primary phase because also when we define boundary conditions, this is the phase that we're going to define water. Okay, so the steps to follow will be this. So then we need to go to zero and see that we have alpha water. Alpha the, represents the, the volume fraction or let's say concentration. And see that we're defining the primary phase because it is this, the water. And then we have the rest of the file, U, P, whatever. So as, as we have done, uh, <clears throat> As we have done so far. So in this case, we need to initialize also the water level. So we're going to use set fill. So you're going to find this directory org where we keep the backup. Okay, already explained this one. Also here we have a new file p underscore rgs. So this is the, the pressure minus the the hydrostatic. A pre component where we don't have the hydrostatic component here, but then when the, the solver starts, it will compute the other field, which is P pressure plus uh, hydrostatic component. You need to define gravity, by the way. Gravity is an important force in this case. So you are going to go run turbo in uh, with a turbulence model. So the setup is it is exactly the same as in single phase. So you can compute the properties like this. Okay, so this is now the classical numerical towing tank. Okay, so to, to do this one, we're going to use Interphone, which is the, source, the, the, the solver now in open phone for free surface using the BOF, but also you can use two phase solar phone. Okay, but however, have in mind that the, the dictionaries are a little bit different. Okay, but two phase solar phone is valid to use, but probably it's an overkiller for, for this case. So basically, this is our domain. Okay, we have our domain here, we have an inlet, outlet, an opening in the top, the wall which is the, the hole here. And then you have lateral walls on bottom with the finance slip wall, and this is symmetry. So see that <clears throat> this is, will be our setup and see that here we need to initialize water level. Okay, so we're going to use some very specific boundary conditions here that is going to take you now the water level and everything. So this is a standard. Now when you are doing these simulations, you can reuse this setup. It's always like this now. So you have inflow, it's a fixed flux, flux pressure. So this is a new boundary condition. Okay, it is a zero gradient, but with some correction for free surface. So you just use 
fun info and you will get the information there. So see that you have this setup here in the info for pressure, velocity, turbulent fields, and alpha water. Okay, so you fix alpha water, then in the outflow, you have this setup and see that we introduce this new uh, boundary condition. So these are also to set up now. The, so this is equivalent to a zero gradient also, but just to keep the water level. Okay, you have it here and so on. Okay, so these are the the new, this two and this one, the new boundary conditions, the rest are the same. Okay, so this is a pretty much a standard setup or, or boundary condition combi combination that you, keep, you can keep if you're doing this kind of towing tank simulations. So when we do this one, remember that you solve your standard neighbor stocks plus this equation to track the interface. Okay. So in open phone now in SB solution, we're going to set up now a few options to, to solve this equation. So for instance, you see this coefficient C alpha that you have here, this coefficient can, usually is recommended to set set it to, to one so and also it is recommended to solve this equation using the mules approach it's a semi-implicit approach so recall recall that is you you use an explicit approach you are going to have an iterative restriction on your time step so this is a semi-implicit that will let you use larger time steps okay so basically you will set up many many, <clears throat> many options in the dictionary sb solution related to this equation to alpha Okay, and this is where you have the options. Now, as you go in FV solution, see that here you can select now the same implicit approach. So my advice here is always leave it on. As you when solving this equation, you can do some sub cycles. So the equations that you see here, the values that you see here are the recommended values. So you have also some comments here, but these are the suggested values, but do not increase too much that sub cycling. And then, <clears throat> This is the interphone is based in, pimp, in the pimple pressure velocity coupling of open phone or the PC iterative. So you need to give these auctions. Okay, so we already have addressed these auctions, so you know how to set up. It works in the same way. So usually in uh, uh, in this kind of simulations, it's recommended to increase a little bit this corrector. So see that now we have three, two. Here we're putting one, but it's better to use two, two, three, one, because this is a more severe physics. You know that you have that interface and that is tricky to solve okay so it's better to do more corrections to get better results okay so you have your comments there then when it comes to the discretization this is skin so see that you have alpha this is the divergence of this equation so to solve alpha we need to use good methods you know because you, you have that strong discontinuity so this is the recommended method okay here is a combination of two methods, interface compression with fan layer. So you can use any method, but follow the advice, use this method is the recommended one. There are some other variants, but there are more advanced now that you can add a selective reconstruction of the interface, but that is a little bit more advanced. So <clears throat> for time discretization, okay, we're going to go fully on a steady. Okay, this is fully on a steady, so we go default Euler, but also you can use uh, Frank Nicholson, okay. <clears throat> but my advice is usually go for the Euler because usually also in these cases you keep your CFL number low. However, okay, but have in mind that these simulations are, are, are time consuming, not running fully on a steady, fully transient, it's time consuming. So, however, also we have the option to run something that is called local time stepping. Okay, I will introduce it here with this solver, but this local time stepping, you can use it with any other solver, even with the previous simulations that we were running single phase with pimple phone, piece of phone, you can use. <coughs> local time stepping so the local time stepping is a hybrid between a fully on steady and a steady okay so it is more stable than the steady okay but less accurate than the fully on steady so it's a way in between so basically what we're doing here now in this local time stepping introducing kind of an artificial time step okay so see that in the steady we don't have time step Okay, so now in this local time stepping, we're going to that at a time step, but this time step is going to be local. So each cell in your domain is going to have a different time step. 
Whereas previously, in the fully unsteady simulations that we have done so far, we're using what is known as global tan stepping. That is, one single cell is going to control the whole CFL of your simulation. Okay, so usually it will be the smallest cell or the, or the cell with the largest velocity. That one is controlling everything. So then every single cell in your domain is going to see the same time step. Instead, local time step every single cell will have a different time step. And this is a very clever idea because where you have scenes that the solution is changing fast, you are going to use a smaller time step there, and then where the solution is changing slowly or far from the domain, you use large time, time steps there, okay? So this is the idea of local time stepping. Don't worry, we're going to see that later. We're going to visualize what is the deal with that. So that local time stepping is control first you need to set this in DDT schemes default local euler which by the way you can keep the same definition from the on aesthetic case and then when you go into the pimple here is where you introduce the parameters to control the time local time stepping so see that you can define in this case that we are using no interform inter with uh, alpha you can define alpha but if you have a single phase this doesn't you, you don't use this but see that you can you this define a mass maximum current for the fluid for the interface and these parameters here represents the kind of a smoothing and damp damping parameters now you know that the solution the time step in your domain will change so this one is to avoid rapid change in the time step okay later we visualize and we're going to see that so again this requires you now some some tweaking but where i'm giving some parameters here that may be most of the time are okay but you you some from time to time you will need to change this one to increase these values are bounded by the way between zero and one and also you can define your maximum delta t so this means that <clears throat> that no cell in your domain is going to have a, a delta t larger than one okay so let's go and run this case so bam 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 so as you go advanced physics in multi-phase here you have three cases then in the next video we'll just make a few comments on this one but this is the case that we're going to focus and see that you have here on a steady solution lts solution so uh let, let let's Look at the setup of the on steady, okay, which pretty much the LTS will be very similar. So as you said, you have your files there, okay, to do the initial the mesh and everything. So let's run first run mesh. So we're going to create the mesh. So when creating the mesh, see that it's also going to do the initialization, okay? And recall that for week one we explored this dictionary six six fields. So here you are telling the solver, where do you want to have water and air? So as you open now your solution, <clears throat> so at the beginning you have zero in your whole domain. So now by doing this initialization, see that we're going to have alpha is what we, what we want to look. So where you have one, you have water, where you have zero, you have air. So basically in sec fields, you are creating this box and you are just putting the water inside there, okay? So this is very, very standard now to do this initialization. So it's starting from here, then the flow is going to enter and then you're going to have you now your towing tank. So just let's, let's take a look at the folder <clears throat> constant and see that you have your classical files, but you have a new one g that represents gravity so gravity is an important force in in this kind of flow so you need to define your gravity vector so this is a vector so you you know your reference system you put it there uh then you can define your turbulence model so the turbulence model is exactly the same as single phase so remember that we only have this pointer that is going to tell you where you have one phase or the other and then according to that you are going to use use the property so the treatment it is exactly the same and then transport properties you define now phases properties water air and you have the option to define sigma so in this case well now in the dictionary see that i put it to zero is disabling that model so for large scale system usually this is not a dominant force so safely you you, you can come put it to zero so you ignore that model then as you go into initial conditions so remember this is the backup see that you have the standard ones no k omega nut i'm not going to comment here we already know what is happening and you know how to compute it so it's computed in the same way 
you velocity also nothing to command and you have this new one okay so in this case in this solver we compute this one no pressure minus the hydrostatic component so if you open here you will see your setup so for instance you want to know what is that new boundary condition always go here for an info and there you have a uh, sure a brief explanation now this boundary condition sets pressure gradient to the provided values such that the flux is the boundary is that the is specified by velocity boundary condition so this is equivalent to a zero gradient okay so you have that is a zero gradient okay <coughs> Zero gradient uh, also will, will take into account if the body is moving. Uh, and, and you can do the same for the other boundary conditions you have there, total pressure, okay? So it's very descriptive, now you said total pressure there. So there are many combinations. This is a, one of the combinations to set up this case. And then you have this alpha water. Remember that this is the volume fraction and see that it's concentration doesn't have, a, doesn't have any, any units. And this is the setup of this wonder condition so again as you go there you have <coughs> you have a description of this boundary condition okay so this is very specific now for this kind of problems where you have free surface okay so this is your your setup okay and now let's go to the numerics okay so as you go to numerics control d sv solution control dictionary is the standard one nothing changed but see that also here we have the option to set up the maximum current of the free surface or the interface so see that usually this is the one that you need to keep uh close to one okay this is very important because you have that very strong discontinuity so here you can put it to whatever you want you can put it 100 there there is no problem but usually this is the restrictive one so usually you are going to reach this condition and this one will be limited by this condition okay so it's very important your alpha which is the free surface the interface you should get the, the current low otherwise you are going to add a lot of numerical dissipation and you are going to lose a lot of information or probably you are not going to predict the right physics if you have wave those waves you are going to 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 smear those waves there and you're going to get a different behavior so then it comes to SV skin, pretty much the same. So the new you have new equations, add the variables to the new new equations. If you forget to add something, open form will let you know the specific variable. And see that we're using the K omega ST, so you need to use this one, okay, for the insensitive treatment. Uh, something that I would like to point out here is this variable. Okay, this is a new one, and this variable is particular now to the volume fraction. So here, it's always recommended, do not use gradient limiters. You use here gradient limiters, you might add too much numerical diffusion, okay? So this is, this is the, the curvature, okay? When you are computing your volume fraction, you can compute a quantity that is called curvature. So this is related to curvature. So if you put a gradient limiter, you are going to have uh, problems now reconstructing the, the interface. So put it linear, okay? So you can put the rest Cell limited Gauss linear, but explicitly define this one as linear. Very important. The rest of this dot standard. And if we go to FV solution, see that we have at the beginning, we solve the new equation, alpha water, and see that you define the entry. So what you see here, you can use it as the standard values. Okay, so these are corrections that you are going to do in your loop. Okay, so you will can increase the number of iterations similar now to what we have seen in the pressure velocity coupling. So usually this is okay. Then you have this quantity here, C alpha, that usually is uh, these two quantities, these values. This is uh, this one you can erase. It's not used anymore. So let, let's see. For one info, EC alpha. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I was in the wrong dictionary. In the wrong window. For one info, EC alpha. I think this variable doesn't exist anymore. So you can safely erase it so it's, yeah it doesn't exist anymore mm -mm -mm. probably better here let me go here and do red is it alpha so i will look in the whole source code but if i quite sure that it doesn't exist 
Okay, so these are also not, yeah, it doesn't doesn't exist that one anymore. So it's safely, I will comment it and let's see what happens when running, but I'm quite sure if I will recall. And then this is the mule corrector. So you enable the mule corrector here, always put it to yes, it's strongly recommended. And then these are some iterations, not regarding some no to a limited function computed there. So 10, it is okay, value. And that's all. Then you keep reading, okay, so a standard dictionaries and remember we go here to the pimple loop and i recommend as we are doing interface now this one that the, this case of multi-phase flows uh, you, you require accuracy you no know, stability so you increase the number of corrections now so in this case we're using a cfl of one or below actually it's one or below because remember it's being limited by this but as you increase your cfl it's better to increase this one okay so when we run we're going to see that okay but see that this is a little bit more uh <clears throat> time consuming stable non numeric so let's run this one sh run solver to run a few time steps so it's going to do the decomposition everything remember that also we're doing the renumber mesh all those st steps Okay, there, checking on, and off you go. Okay, so it's launching the turbulence model. And see that at the beginning, the first iterations, it tends to be slow, and then it starts to speed up. So see that it's running. Okay, so let's wait for this iteration to see the output screen here. Okay, so see that the user reports, forces, coefficients, minimum and maximum values, everything reported here everything makes sense and see that here you have your three corrections two non-orthogonal corrections and one single outer corrector okay and here you have the information regarding the current number so you have two current numbers okay remember one related to the interface or the equation that solve or so is related to this equation the other the other current numbers related to your Navier Stokes equations, okay? But usually the interface could and number it, it is the most restrictive one. And see that that one already reached one and automatically it's going to limit the other one. So in this case it's running with a could of one. So this setup that you see here, it is okay. But let me do a modification just to show you, okay? So now let me increase the could and, okay? Let me go here and put a could and number. And actually here you have the comments. Okay, you see that you can run this case up to a current of 10 with relative good accuracy. Well, see that you need to increase the, 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 the piece of loops, okay, the <coughs> two, three, at least three outer, okay, should be here. And let me change this one, let me go here to four. Okay, first look at here that still you have your current limited by the interface. So now as you change the, the interface and increase we're going to see that it is going to change here. So let's see, let me read it. Okay, it's iterating. See that the current is increasing and always the interface one is the limiting one. Remember that there is a bit, that is a very strong discontinuity. Okay, so usually that is the restrictive one. Also recall that alpha, it is bounded between zero and one. So see that here, maximum value one, minimum value zero. Okay, so you should monitor that because sometimes it may happen that you're going to accumulate alpha due to numerical diffusion. So you should be careful, okay? So always monitor alpha and should be bounded. And see that it is increasing, but I, was I already started to get the feeling that, and it's starting to have some stability problems. So see that my alpha is starting to become now negative. I see that it's increasing. So always is you want to go with large time step now with this kind of simulations go here and increase that one okay so you i put it here to three but you can use the other method put it to 20 and then enable this residual control okay and see that now it's going to do three pimple iterations okay and this is going to improve a lot but what whatever we're doing okay so you let it run, so you are going to slow down everything, but hey, at the end of the day, we want a solution. And see here that 
interface couldn't number four and the other one is becoming larger. So, so we see that this is the, the one, the restrictive one, okay? The one that it's going to restrict your, your simulation. <coughs> so as you can see, these are very time consuming simulations. And actually this one, I, I run to 120 seconds, I think. 100 seconds so it's a long way here okay well at least with four processors you have more likely that or you're, you're you're going to get a faster outcome okay so see that and already starting to see also that it, it is oscillating so even if i increase in that one i still see that i have some stability problems when you see that the current number it is oscillating see that 397 the previous one 413 this is also a direct indication that there are some oscillations. So it's better to reduce your current number to stabilize the solution. Okay. So in this case, it's also just to mention that you need to, if you want to increment your current, it's better to do it now in a progressive way. You start with one, then go to two, then to four, do it as slowly. But, but as you go suddenly, it usually you start to see those oscillations. So here I reduce it to two, okay, and let's see, and see that it is oscillating, already is oscillating a lot. Okay. And let me go back here, okay. Okay, so now uh, we're back to, uh, uh, to two, see the soul now is reduced and likely you are going to stabilize the solution. So all these modifications, as you can see, you can do it on the fly, on the fly while running. You can also change numerical schemes and everything. When I was talking about there are more advanced options, here you have it. You see here this, this is a more advanced reconstruction of the interface, okay? So this is another method. It is more time consuming, but likely it's more accurate. So if you want also, you can go for this method, so have in mind that are more Time consuming and probably you need also uh, have to be careful with your time step that is stuff because it can be very sensitive to large time step. Okay, these two methods are more sophisticated. You can look for this. This is very standard, and then you will you, you will get a lot of information on that. So this is it. This is how how, how we run <clears throat> how we run out uh, uh, interface case no. Uh, a free surface case, in this case a Tobin tank. So let me, okay, let me go here. Let me do something. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Okay, so I will save this. Uh, da, 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 da. This is okay. And this is okay. So default dictionaries. So I'm not going to run to the end. So here you have. You, as you can get the idea, it's time consuming. But let me show you the final solution. Now, so here, when you remember, when you see the folder Sol 125, this is already have a pre-computed solution. So let me open it just to show you a little bit the post processes. Okay, let me open Paraphone. Okay, our domain, let me go to the solution tank, 125, and see that I select here alpha water, and see that at this point, after 125 seconds, see that you have the wave there, everything. You have all fields, okay, you let me select everything. See that I was computing also mean values and everything. And to show you here, that is you put plot P, see that this is hydrostatic component, and the other here, it will be a static pressure okay so in boundary conditions you define a static pressure but let's capture the 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 water the surface the water surface so remember you go here contour select alpha water C, 0 0.5 represents the interface and there you go this is the water interface i see that you have there your wave you can measure now for those who who are doing the simulation, you have the Kelvin angle and that stuff. So you can measure, you can plot the velocity on top. Okay. So many things you can do there. Okay. Boom, 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 mid velocity. 
and this is your free surfaces okay so this is the unsteady case okay let me close here let's stop this case so as you see there is not big a deal the only thing is that it's time consuming and let's go to the lts lts is pretty much the same okay i'm not going to launch any well probably i will run a few few times so let me do mesh as usual also there you have a solution so see that we run 10,000 iterations not cycles so just to show you that this is exactly the same bond that condition is exactly the same the only difference now is that you enable the local tan stepping first as the skins local leveler that's all the rest remains the same you need to put the bounded like in a steady and nothing it's exactly the same as it was in the unsteady the only thing is new discretization is came for time and then sv solution see that here in pimple is where you give the controls for the current number you are not controlling anymore here okay these parameters that here and you see that i didn't put it and this time also you, you put it to one but this doesn't have any fed just this is the iteration everything now is being controlled here so see that you are telling that your maximum current is 10 the alpha current is 4 and then you use damping okay damping to smooth the solution so let's let me run a few iterations and you just to show you the outcome here and then we look at the final solution so we're running here so usually these ones this is this is the approach that you take for instance if you are doing sick keeping this is the approach you take okay this is much faster than fully on a state okay and sick keeping you know that you are quite going to reach that that trim position so go ahead and use use this approach this approach so see that when you are running see that you is reporting okay you have the standard no solvers the mule correction so these are the iterations just to make it clear so it, it is the same for on a steady see that alpha core one two three core corrections there okay so as you increase that one or you can increase the sub cycle it will repeat twice this okay so usually those values are okay and see here that you are going to see this information so see that you're going to have different time scale minimum and maximum so see that we're reaching the maximum delta t that we're defining so okay your the, the time is not going to be larger than that that you define here but see that it's telling you that you have in souls in some cells this time step and in some cells this time step and this is smooth and damp it is related to this and this is just basically smoothing and damping the time step between cells so to avoid rapid change in delta t okay so see that nothing changed okay it's running in the same way so i will stop it now and let, let's visualize the pre-computed solution okay that there we can see that paraffin okay so the only difference, remember, is just this SV solution and here you set up the local tiny stepping and also remember that the local tiny stepping, you can use it to, with any solver that supports local tiny stepping. So simple foam, pimple foam, raw pimple foam, all those solvers su support the, this option. Okay, so advance. And the main difference here is that now you get exactly the same solution, everything, okay? So you can run and you can compare the computing time and everything and you will see that same solution. But here we get an additional field. See this field R delta T. So this is reciprocal of delta T time step. So as you plot this, this is what you are plotting. The time step in each cell of your domain. So remember the fully on steady, the time step is constant. Every cell is going to see the same time step here different cells see different time steps so to see better let's plot the interface so, and in interface see that i'm plotting the reciprocal of delta t and see that where scenes are happening or where you have large velocities where you are going to have the smaller time step so this is a reciprocal though no? so large, large values mean a small time step so see here that here 
where you have that cre crest there you have large small time steps and here far from the domain where nothing is happening where you don't have anything see that time step it is large and here you, you have many regions where you have a small time step so this is the idea of local time stepping again you are not conserving time and again it is a huge simplification now it, the results might be very questionable but you are accelerating now your your computing time so this is this approach is more sounded more sound than the fully steady okay in the fully steady you don't have in any way time here you are now have a time okay it is local but you have a time and this makes it more sound okay so it will be a little bit more time consuming or more time consuming than a steady state but from the numerical point of view it's much much stable so my advice go instead of using a state, full steady state it's better to use this so get used to to use the local tennis step you can do the benchmarking with the previous cases and you will get the the difference there you will see that you will get pretty much the same results you will realize also that they are a little bit more time consuming but it's much better to to proceed in this way so i think this is all for this tutorial okay yes so i i hope that during the q a sessions uh, you will ask a lot so thank you very much for your attention and see you in next videos bye